Welcome to another episode of Command Combat Battle Reports. Today we'll be starting something a little different in Flames of War. We are going to go through the new campaign in Blood, Guts, and Glory. This game goes through the U.S. counterattack at the Battle of the Bulge, where Patton's tank companies push back at the German armor east of the city of Nancy in a farming community known as Ehrencourt. The open, rolling, hilly grasslands made an ideal location for tank battles, which is where we will have our fight throughout the campaign. Players will be scored after each battle to determine personal scores and the score for their team. There will be three players on each side, each fighting for one section, green, red, and blue. These players will play out two battles in the first section, then one in each successive section, following their own routes until they reach the end where they will have one grand battle royale. Our first game will be along the green route at Teolard, the pronunciation of which I have probably butchered. The tanks have traveled all night to find the enemy and have gotten lost in the heavy fog. As the fog lifts in the early morning, they find that they have stumbled into one another and are now face to face. This promises to be an interesting fight. We have the 4th Armored Division 5 Sherman M4 tanks. They're known as Roosevelt Butchers for a good reason. They're confident veterans, so it'll be a bit harder to hit them. And they're led by Creighton Abrams, one of America's greatest commanders. He has a special rules. That's the shortest way home, which gives his tanks the special spearhead move. Up front! which gives his tanks the German Special Tactics special rule, and we're going in, which gives his tanks the Stormtrooper move at the end of each turn. Sounds like a tough character. Let's hear what the American player plans to do with him as he talks in front of our strikingly bad blue screen. Hi, I'm Lance Block. I'm playing Flames of War today. Um, my history is I was in the service, 6970 First Air Cav, Light Infantry. Uh, I'm a photographer, three-dimensional photographer, and I hope to survive a German onslaught today of superior tanks and uh, capture some of the objectives. That was some pretty lousy blue screen work there. The German force consists of two Panthers and four Panzer IVs. This looks like an impossible force for those Shermans to deal with. My name is David Martinez. I'm a recording engineer in the Los Angeles area. And my German tank ace's name is Hans Gruber. I have a couple of Panthers and a couple of Panzer tanks, and I have no idea what I'm going to do. Lance is doing his spearhead move to finish setting up, so let's move on to the American first turn. Normally this game would start at a distance, but with the fog rules, these tanks are on top of each other before they know what's going on, which is working to the Americans' advantage as they rush forward and hit the German column on both sides. The Sherman stabilizers give them full rate of fire on the move, which means they can fire two AT-10 shots each on the German flanks. This could be devastating. At least the Panthers have a side armor that might be able to make it. It's not their invulnerable front, but it's better than the Panzer IVs. The American scored four hits on the Panther, and the Panther's armor only bounced one shot. So it goes to firepower, and the Panther is destroyed. Now he's going after the Panzer IVs. They unfortunately get no armor save since their side armor is so weak. Any hit is going straight to firepower. And he scored a hit. That's one Panzer down. Let's see if he can take out the other Panther. He's got two shots. He hit once. The Panther did not save. Now on a three or better, the Panther is destroyed. A one! The Panther is bailed, but it still is in the game. Let's see if they can pull it out during their turn. The Panther has not remounted, so he's moving the Panzer around to the flank of the Sherman and turning the turret of his command Panzer to get two shots off. He got two hits. One of them is a flank shot, and the other is against the second Sherman's front armor. His anti-tank is a little better than the Sherman's, being 11. Lance rolls a 3, added to his 6 front armor. That's not enough. David rolls for firepower and takes out the Sherman from the front. But the one at the side, he doesn't quite make it. He did get the other Sherman off to the right, so now we just have a ton of burning tanks out there. It's time to pull out the barbecue. So in the American turn, he's not able to remount his Sherman and he decides to stand where he is and take the easy shots. Looks like he only hit the first tank once. And wasn't able to back up. Now on to the Panther. He really wants to finish that thing off and he hits it twice. The Panther rolls to save. The first makes it. The second roll, not so much. 
And there's the firepower roll. The Panther tanks are taken out. It's looking pretty bleak for the Germans. Now here's something that's interesting and new to the Blood, Glutz, and Glory game. The objectives are now special abilities. When you capture one, you pick it up to see what you get. The German player has captured one and gets letters from home. The letters from home boost their morale and gives the player the ability to re-roll any morale roll. This may come in handy right now as he tries to ream out his tank. Looks like he won't need it. He's got a six. So his commander is up and running. Oh, his panzer maneuvers behind the Sherman and fires, but misses! His commander fires two shots to take out his two Shermans, but only manages to destroy the one! For Storm to remove, he pulls back to the edge of the board to try to keep his flank clear. Alright, so the American player picks up his card since his tank is the only one close to it, and he gets field manuals, which allows you to make either player re-roll a skill test. Very useful in all these woods. He's moving up on the flanks again. It seems to be the theme of this battle. I don't blame them. Here come the rolls. There's one hit. Uh, and a burning panzer. The other one fires and misses both shots. Lance still gets a stormtrooper move even though he's American because he's got Abrams. He can't make the move, but he uses his card to get a skill reroll, and he makes it. Looks like it's an important move to use the field manuals for it. He's using it to do a suicide run with Abrams. He's placing him right in front of the German tank. Oh, I see what he's doing. He's boxing him in so he can't get out. Yeah, but he's giving up his best man to do it. We'll see if the gamble paid off. Here we are in the German turn. David can't move. So he fires at Abrams. He hits twice, then backs up with the firepower test. Abrams gave up his life to stop the German tank. Yeah. <laughs> Two shots of threes. He turns his turret and fires at point blank, hitting both times. Two hits. Two hits. All right, and then it's just two firepowers. The firepower test Reverse. should end the game. Yeah. Oh, oh, snake eyes. Still, it's a double bail, so the reluctant troops might leave. Let's see if he gets that tank operational. You need a fiver better to get back in. I do. Oops. In the box. No, he will not. But he has letters from home, which gives him the reroll. And he makes it. The letters from home save the day. Someone out there loves him. Goes to show how important it is to hear from loved ones. So now he turns on the Sherman and fires. He needs a four. He gets a hit. Now he needs to back it up with firepower of three plus, and this game is over. Oh, it's oh. not over. A one will only stun the tank, and this game continues. But it will only continue if he gets control of the tank. He needs a four or better to do it, so there's a 50-50 chance. And he doesn't make it. The game is over. So in the first battle, the Axis gets one point. He's not taking the territory yet because there are two battles for the first area. However, he racked up several points. He gets one point for playing, one point for having his ace still at the end of the game, and he gets two points for having more tanks left at the end of the game. Lance, meanwhile, got one point for playing. Also, he gets one point for his ace still being alive since technically he was not killed at the end. Also, he gets two points for having destroyed more tanks, because even though he lost, he still destroyed five tanks while his opponent destroyed four before the end of the game. It seems these opponents are evenly matched. Let's see what they have to say about the battle against this lousy excuse for a blue screen. Well, we did the best we could. Uh, we were outnumbered and they had superior tanks. We took out the two biggest ones, which uh, I hope minimized the threat for the guys coming up behind us. And uh, we did the best we could. We whittled them down to one tank and we were outnumbered. That's not too bad. I'm happy. Uh, I think I got lucky. Um... The game was a little bit closer than it should have been, but at least I won, so that's a good. 
Yes, it was. Tune in again to see these opponents have their rematch and to watch the other enemies go at each other along the Aaron Court line in more Command Combat Battle Reports. Have a good one, everybody.